Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Adidas Morning Show at the NACRA 17 49er and 49er FX European Championship. It is beautiful, Keel, and Keel continues to be beautiful for us today. Three days in a row of, well, not a lot of rain, right? I mean, that's a good thing. Uh, it's been great racing so far. The final day of qualification is ahead of us, and that's when uh, anyone beyond those top 20 in the FX and the, F and the 49er fleets get bump down to silver fleet while the gold fleets go for well for all the gold all the gold and all the glory um, i'm alan block and i want to welcome you back to our coverage and thank you for joining us throughout the week please make sure you like us and share us on facebook and uh, check out what we've got on instagram we've got the guys from sailing energy here taking great pictures check out their instagram feed we got bo outeridge who just joined us today from the moth worlds and uh, he's going to be doing some great video stuff and our full live coverage of all the racing starts tomorrow three days of video with commentary with me and Ben and uh, so, uh, and uh, Marcus Bauer, former Olympian. We've got uh, tracking, we've got onboard cameras, we've got all sorts of cool, cool toys to play with, and you guys are going to have some great racing to watch. So we've also um, got these cool things, spinnaker watches. White isn't really my style, but I wanted to show you white. Yesterday I showed you, it doesn't work with me, does it? Um, but uh, the Spinnaker Yacht Timer, these things are pretty cool. Spinnaker-watches.com. If you put in the code LIVE25 at checkout, that's 25% off. That's a quarter off these beautiful watches. And we're going to be giving away $200 gift certificates to buy your own Spinnaker watch for those of you who are watching our live feed. So don't forget Spinnaker-watches.com. Also, if you click on the link on 49er.org or NACRA17.org, for Adidas sailing in that top right corner, you can buy cool polos like this or some of the great trap shoes that they have. they got phenomenal trapezing shoes and, and some other awesome sailing kit from Adidas. All right, now we'll get to these guys here. I have the German team, one of many Germans here in the 49er fleet, Eustace Schmidt and Max. Someone's supposed to go out now. Is that you? Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully hopefully not. not. <laughs> <laughs> and Max Burma. Um, and guys, uh, uh, you were really close to going to the Olympics last time, but you didn't make it. Um, does that kind of knock the wind out of your sails, and is it hard to recover from that, or is it something that uh, that's okay? No, nah, I mean, like, uh, the Olympic qualification last time was really close, as you said, for us, and if we would have made it, it would have been something really big. But we were competing against one of a very very top guys. These guys were European champion, I think, three years already previous Olympic Games. And we figured oh, we, man we managed to have a pretty strong training group at the end where we both managed to got one European title at the end. And these guys at the end got a medal at the Olympic Games, which was like the ultimate goal for us Germans, no matter really uh, who of us was managing it. So uh, we could say this this was a successful campaign anyway. I, I keep asking this because I, as an American, you know, Americans don't play well on teams together, <laughs> right? Like we all, you know, America's sort of like you're always out for yourself. I mean, it's not always true, but it's kind of a national characteristic. A, a little bit is the cowboy characteristic. So we hear all you guys saying, yeah, we're all on the team. And as long as someone does well, that we help to get there. But, but that's it seems like it's really true for a lot of you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when we started, we were kind of the young guys and these guys were a bit older than we, so we really had to step up our game. But then we got like really good friends and our coach, Thomas Ryan, did a really amazing job of keeping the whole group together. And in the end, we, yeah, we managed to say really well, all of us, and they got the medal in the uh, Olympic Games. So that was, that was pretty pleasing. Were you guys there in, in Rio to, to, to cheer them on or be available if someone got injured or anything like that? Yeah, we were there with these guys like two or three years ahead of the Olympic Games itself and spent there a lot of time and got hosted by the Brazilians themselves and had a brilliant time there in Rio the whole time anyway. And, and when your team is, is, uh, is, is winning that medal, do you, are you so excited and cheering or is there a little part of you that's saying, I, I think we could have got a medal too? Yeah, I, I think it probably was maybe a bit like that. When we saw these guys winning, it was like very emotional in any way because it was something big they've achieved and we felt like we've been a little bit part of it. But sure, it could have also been like, like this, this one eye that's sad. Oh, yeah, could have been, could have been maybe us at least competing then, maybe going for this medal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been an exciting fleet so far. Good racing for for two days, but I assume, uh, being from uh, northern Germany, I think you guys have spent a lot of time on this water. Is today more of like a, a keel day? Uh, yeah, kind of. It's. Um, I mean, we most of the time we have windy and keel, so in the beginning it was a bit light, but I think it's filling in nicely now. So it could have been uh, like a classic keel day, onshore conditions. Uh, yeah. We've raced a little bit in this kind of stuff. And, and is that part of why you're doing so well here? I mean, you guys are, are sailing really, really strong, it seems like. You keep coming on, and it looks uh, you look good going into day three. 
Yeah, well, we keep, uh, we are feeling quite comfortable here. And in the beginning of the regatta, we said that maybe a little bit of a home advantage is that we are quite used to the rain. We apparently haven't had so far. <laughs> and all the other guys who come in here for 10,000 kilometers of traveling to see rain and no sunshine. So, yeah, we keep on uh, going with that and we'll take whatever comes. And what do you think about the competition in the other fleets? This is the first, uh, I mean, the first uh, in the new cycle where you've got these three or four fleets with the C uh, Nacras together. Even though you're not on the same course all the time, is it nicer to have all these boats here and all this different activity, or is it more distracting? No, I think it's super nice. I mean, the 49er and the Nacra sailing, now the Sea Foils is kind of state of the art sailing, and um, bringing this all together at one event is pretty special. So it's cool to have all the guys around. I mean, it's kind of the World Cup but only with the cool boats, you could say. <laughs> World Cup for the cool boats, I like that. There's a quote, we can use that. I don't know that World Sailing is going to be that happy with that one, but um, uh, what about the crossover? There's so many guys that seem to be going back and forth between the 49ers and the NACRA now. Is that something you guys think about uh, at all, crossing over, or are you just skiff guys all the way? Well, we're pretty much skiff guys. We're, we're stuck in our team, as we've been sailing now for the past 11 years together. I think we'll <laughs> keep on doing this. So, um, <laughs> and that's not really an option then for us to go on this NACRA. But like we see, as you said, many guys going from the 49 and NACRA and doing well. And yeah, it's just because it's a fast boat and it's fun racing. We also see all this crossover from the 49er to the uh, the Volvo boats uh, to, to, to the America's Cup, obviously, you know, Germany hasn't had an America's Cup entry for a while. You know, is there any talk about you young guys? Hey, maybe it's time for Germany to enter the America's Cup and I'm ready to drive the boat. Oh, well, yeah, there, there are always some voices which keep saying, yeah, the Germans will have an America's Cup team and we keep believing in it. And we've just had a, a youth America's Cup team competing at the youth America's Cup, which was like quite a bit. But the step towards the America's Cup is like still a really big one, but I'm pretty, pretty sure that the Germans one day will manage. What do you think, Max? You ready? Yeah, definitely. I mean, all of us, we're looking forward to it. And uh, I mean, we have some big companies here in Germany who could definitely like finance uh, these budgets, sure. like huge budgets. And um, I mean, it will be amazing for all of us. We'll see. We'll see soon. If Germany goes to Auckland, hopefully these guys are on board. Thank you for joining me, Max and Eustace. Guys, have a good day out today. And uh, we've got our second couple up here to talk to you right now and uh here they come before they come on screen actually let me just direct you guys to 49.org and macro17.org click on the tab uh, or the events and uh, or there's a, a, a bullet to take you to the, the results right away you can see what those qualifications are set up um what they're like right now and who's on the bubble and who's going to get in who's going to get kicked out these guys though are going to get in come on over here David Gilmore, good to see you, my friend. And Joel, it's good to see you, too. What's your last name again? Turner. There's another Joel Turner who's a mothy, right? Anyway, see this, see this line? Come inside it. There we go. All right. Listen, uh, David, I haven't seen you in a little while. Last time I saw you, you were sailing uh, much bigger catamarans than these little knackers we see out here now. And uh, you seem to put, put it into everything. I mean, there, there doesn't seem to be a class that you, that you don't touch. But the Niners is where you always seem to come home. Yeah, yeah, we've been, um, well, I've been sailing the 49er probably for the last um, six years now, and uh, it's definitely been my focus over the last two or three years, and we're enjoying it at the moment. It's pretty good fun. And, uh, I mean, you're performing really well. You moved up to third overnight, and, and, and do, you, do, do these qualification rounds, are they sort of lower pressure? I, I have to say, looking at both of you guys, you look like you're having a lot of fun out there, you know? <laughs> yeah, we're always out there to enjoy it, you know, but... I know for this regatta, it's, you know, got a lot tougher. The gold fleet's only 20 boats. Um, and then once you get into gold fleet, there's still a hell of a lot more racing to go. And with three three fleets and 90 boats overall, you still got to put a lot into the qualifying just to make it. And during the qualifying, you know, we're just trying to make sure that we're working on our skills and making sure we're good to go when it comes to gold fleet racing. So you don't take it lightly? No, of course not. It's, um, it's going to be, like Joel said, it's 20 boats at this regatta instead of um, 25, which is been the standard for the last few years so it's even tougher to make gold fleet and then this year we've got a lot of um new teams in the 49er um being the year after the olympics and uh a lot of them are quite small so on days like today where there's not as much wind they're actually pretty fast because they're a lot lighter and it becomes even tougher for um for teams like us that are a bit bigger and we we go faster in the breeze but when it's lighter we struggle a bit and so it's you just got we just got to make it through to the next round especially considering um the points from the qualifying is halved so as long as we make it through um i think it'll be pretty 
almost a new regatta from there. Yeah, that's a nice thing. I mean, it's a different format. You think you think it's a better format, though, or, or, or what's it better and what's it worse in? Um, oh, there's so many changes at this event from a standard 49er regatta. I mean, some of them we like and some we don't. Um, but I think it's just a trial, and I think by the, in the next couple of years it'll all get figured out, and we'll hopefully have some really good racing. Let me ask this one. Obviously, you guys uh, on the higher end of the scale, as you said, uh, uh, weight-wise, um, uh, amongst the 49er fleet. How do you come up with that that number that you want to weigh in at? Is your team, is, is the, does the Australian team, like when the coaches get together and they say, well, the number's 200 and, you know, or 171 kilos, so that's what you should be at? Or how does it work? Uh, I guess we kind of figure it out over a long period of time. You know, our coaches sort of give us some recommendations and then you know, we have lots of teams with all different sorts of weights and we do, I guess, a fair bit of testing just through sailing against each other as to what's fast and we just try to figure out a weight where, A, we're happy and we're still allowed to eat some meals and then um, find a weight that's quick in all of the breezes. Well, you have to be able to eat. You also have to be able to build muscle when you need to. You have to be able to, to do all that. Now, what about for a place like Keel that's usually breezy? Do you not worry about it so much if you're going off to, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, San Diego, then you, you know you, you stop eating for a month. It, how does that work? Yeah, definitely you, you look at the conditions um, that, that you're going to have for the, the important events. But uh, I think that you, you can't, like Joel said, you've just got to be happy as well as being at the right weight because if you can't think or function properly at the event, then it's not going to help either. So that's, um, that's really important. And um, yeah, like... It's, it does make a difference, but it's, it depends what, what a lot of the, um, the, the fleet is, what their weight is, that, um, that sort of, if a lot of fleet's heavy, then it doesn't matter too much. So you got your, your brother here, I think, is that right? Lockie's here? Yeah, my youngest brother's here sailing against yeah. us. And your, your other brother also sails these boats uh, occasionally, right? Yeah, he's, he's not really doing much anymore. He was sailing the 49er last year. He's, um, Focusing more on the match racing tour, and they're over in Russia now, about to start their racing. Nice on a river in St. Petersburg. Eesh, eesh. Anyway, um, we won't talk about that, but we'll talk about uh, about uh, doing this kind of thing with your brother or against your brother, because one of the thing, the, the stories that I'm so interested in is how these teams work together, how these squads work together. When at the end of it all, they're your competitor for the spot. Right, so it's sort of this strange situation where you're you're all trying to work as hard as you can to get 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 the other guys as good as they can, they can be, so they can then fight with you for that spot and all that money. Right, it seems it seems odd. So, but for you without a brother in the fleet, I mean, where do you from from that position? What is it like? Is it is can you really work together, or is there always sort of that little bit of tension? No, I'm just trying to take advantage of the Gilmore family, you know. <laughs> but um, no, it it is it is really good, like. You know, Lockie and his crew, Ryan, are sailing really well in the 49er at the moment. And, you know, being based in Perth, uh, we spend a lot of time training together, as you, like, you basically nailed on, on, on the head, trying to get both teams up to a really high level. And then at the end of the, um, at the, end of the four years, then we're just going to see who's the best, who gets the spot. And, you know, hopefully it'll be us. But if it's the other guys, then I guess I'm going to just make it a little bit tougher for him at home. <laughs> Talk about sibling rivalry for a second. Take that one. Um, yeah, not too sure there's much sibling rivalry. The other guys are just starting. so. Um, but I'm sure in the years to come that they'll be pretty tough to beat. And, um, and yeah, we'll have a tough time ahead. But we definitely, uh, they're, they're getting a lot better. And it's, it's starting to be a bit more of a struggle. But at the moment, there. Did you guys fight as kids? I'm sure you did, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> You still fight? And what about on the course? Is there more yelling when you kind of in a situation where they're crossing or you're crossing? Yeah, well, we, we expect them to, to help us out, but they actually don't. So <laughs> we're getting a bit of um, a few bad situations. But apart from that, it's all good. It seems like a lot of fun. You know, I, I, I constantly think about, about guys like you. And there's so many people here that come from families that have Olympic or, you know, pro sailing or America's Cup or Volvo experience and the kids and grandkids, nieces, nephews. You know, it seems like a real... A real family thing, but but for for the Gilmores, you know, where you jump around from boat to boat, and I see your name all over everything. Um, why the Olympics, and and how long does the Olympics go on before you like just work on a career and other things? Is this the ultimate goal? Is to get a medal? 
yeah, at the moment, that's the goal. I mean, it's what we're working towards. We've worked with um, with Nathan and Goobs in the in the last um, four years, and and it was that was really good experience. We got we started to get close to them by the end, but they were still the next level above us, and um, that's what we're sort of aiming to do for this next four years. And Joel and I have um, just started sailing together at the end of last year, and um, we sailed in Kiel, our first event, and that went pretty well. So we're pretty happy with how we're going so far. We've just got to um, sort of keep the ball rolling. It's kind of nice when, when someone who's been as dominant as Nathan and, and Burling, and they kind of clear out a little bit and make, make way for everyone else. Yeah, it does, I guess. Um, you know, you always go through these transitions where people move in and move out, and I guess the next big question that everyone's waiting to answer is who's going to be the next Burling or Nathan Outeridge and Goobs and Blair? And, um, you know, there's a lot of people vying for that spot and we're just going to keep working and keep training, and keep pushing until we can hopefully be the next ones. All right. Well, you're, you're, you're on your way and certainly good spot right now in third place. Have a great day out there today. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, David. Yeah. Thank you, Joel. Nice to meet you. Joel is also, a, I think, a class. Are you, are you on the class board or something like that? I am at the moment, yeah. You are, all right. Really? So, what, so hang on a second. So hang on. Come, for, <laughs> hang, come a little closer here. So... So, so you're a vice president of the 49er class, but you're out here racing. Is that like uh, making more complicated? Is there any actual class work you have to do while you're here? Yeah, no, I'm just going to make up the rules and talk to the judges and the jury. And <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's, um, you know, Nath Outridge was the vice president beforehand. And, you know, in the Aussie squad, a few of the boys will know of me as um, maybe the more mature one of the team. <laughs> so I, I automatically got up for, to replace Nath's position there. So... For now, I'm taking the spot, and we'll see what it brings later on. How has the class reacted and, and received this, this? some of these new experimental format changes, you know, uh, uh, different gold medal fleet, stadium sailing, all that? Is, is everyone on board, or is there, is there st uh, people that are not quite won over yet? I think we'll sort of find out more at the end of the week. You know, everyone is just sort of trying to figure it out now, and we'll actually have most of the tests over the next few days. Um, you know, we tested theatre racing and double top marks in 2013 and like some people like it, some people don't, but it's just different. I think the only way for us to approach it is it's just a different way of what we do. Um, so we just got to approach it as something new, trying to figure out how to do it the best we can. And at the end of the week, you know, we have some happy people and some unhappy people as you always do. You're, you are very mature. Listen to that. Way more, <laughs> way more mature than Nate. All right, guys, thank you so much, and uh, enjoy your, your day on the water. The breeze filling in a little bit, folks, and I'll talk to you about that breeze um, now. But just to explain to you uh, these format changes that I've been discussing, the way that the Olympic classes have been covered uh, with TV for the past four or five years, something like that, and the way that they race their format, is, is it's interesting because with ten wildly different classes, the coverage was always uh, was standardized. So same nine races or 10 races and then a medal race, whatever it was, and the medal race counts double. Um, and the races are long and uh, the fleets are big. And it's, anyone who's watched the Olympics on TV knows the Olympic sailing is not the most compelling thing to watch. Now there's lots of things that they did, they've done that made it more difficult to watch. You know, you sort of find 80 year old commentators and that doesn't work very well. And you know, maybe weak graphics and that doesn't work very well, but like it's changed. Things are changing so quickly. All these other types of sailing are kind of showing us how it's done led by the cup, um, led by, you know, the world match racing tour has done a really nice job of it as well in the M32 cat and some other classes are doing nice jobs with extreme sailing series. Um, and I think they're starting to show the way to the rest of the world. The 49ers, 49er FX, and NACRA 17 classes decided they wanted to try some of that more modern coverage too this time around. And, and uh, World Sailing in a, at a November meeting gave these classes special dispensation um, to run their own sort of TV program and test it and check it out. That's what we'll be doing starting tomorrow at uh, what time? At 11 o'clock will be our first race, and uh, we have some exciting finals racing for you. Now, the cool thing about this is the splits are small enough that we can follow along and have a good handle on it. We will have live tracking, both in the in the commentary booth to tell the story to you and for you guys at home if you want to run it in a separate window. Um, and I think it should be pretty exciting. I know it's going to be better than what you've seen in the past uh, um, sort of from typical Olympic class coverage. Now, the 49ers have done some of this stuff already. Um, so you might be familiar with their style, but I think this time it's going to be even more 
intense, even more exciting. And uh, we've got a really nice group here, the Sale Tracks guys and uh, Bo Outeridge and a bunch of other people helping us to make a, a, a beautiful show for you. So that's sort of how that's going to go. I don't know what the forecast is yet, but generally you don't get more than a day at a time here without some breeze. Um, and even today, which we had a, a pretty dire forecast in the, you know, early this morning, it's already looking like maybe seven, eight knots out here and, and quite lovely on shore. It almost feels like a bit of a thermal. So um, cool stuff. And if you look out where, where I'm looking out and you can see a little bit, which is sort of the, the western edge of the Bay of Kiel um, and the breeze has come in from, from the, the, the seaside, um, sort of the, yeah, the north seaside. And um, it looks like, I mean, forecast holding true. So seven knots, six knots now, maybe building up to about eight, eight or nine at the most. And hopefully we'll be able to get in as many qualification ra races as we can before uh, the thunderstorms roll through tonight at five or six. What else do I have to tell you? I'm going to remind you one more time. I'll tell you a little bit about this contest because uh, those of you who watch this and we're getting, I don't know, four to 8,000 views of these morning shows. So thank you to all of you who are watching this. But um, if you want, tune into the live show, we're going to be giving you call outs to take a picture of you or your crew or your friend or your mom or your sailing, uh, uh, your, your yacht club or whoever watching some live 49 or 49 FX or NACRA 17 sailing. Take a picture, post it to Twitter, which is 49 er sailing or NACRA, uh, NACRA 17 sailing. Post it to Instagram, same deal. Post it to Facebook, same deal. Any one of those three avenues. And you are entered to win a $200 gift certificate for one of these awesome watches. And that's most, I think that's most of the cost of a watch. So, you know, I think uh, it's certainly worth doing. And it's, it could be a great gift or it's a really nice watch. It's got a countdown feature. It's got, uh, well, it's got all sorts of cool stuff. Check them out, spinnakerwatches.com. And uh, what else do we have for them today? Today we have uh, Instagram pictures going in, I think, uh, quite a bit. I know we're going to have some more great stuff coming in in real time from the water from Pedro Martinez and Tomas, whatever, from Sailing Energy. Um, and uh, we, I'm going to be doing some more interviews. We did a, a short interview this morning with, um, with Ella Clark from Western Australia team talking about being on the bubble and what it means to, be elim uh, to sort of face that elimination. So that's always something that you watch. And you can go back and check out some of the great interviews we've done over the past few days. Uh, I, I really enjoyed speaking to... Um, uh, the Irish sailor who had a hole in his boat yesterday, Ryan Seaton, that's right, who had a hole in his boat yesterday. That was a lot of fun. And uh, Jason Waterhouse, really valuable to hear his contributions, the silver medalist um, who is not out sailing because he's got a back injury. And Darren Bundock has filled in for him. So that's kind of fun. I can't wait. I'm going to really try and get Darren Bundock on this show tomorrow morning. We'll see how it goes. Um, but tomorrow, with our live coverage beginning, the live show, our live uh, intro show will, will move earlier. So I'm not exactly sure when. I think we might move it down into the boat park as well just to get more action and be a little bit more roving. We're not sure, so stay tuned to Facebook here. We'll let you know everything we can. And uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Like us, smash the like button, smash the share button, and crush it all, and uh, we will catch up with you later today.